Hi guys, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. Last week, we learned about how Daniel and his three friends were thrown into a fiery furnace. Do you remember his three friends' names? If you do, say them with me. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Awesome job, guys. That's a great memory you have. This week, we are going to learn about Daniel in the lion's den. Shortly after God saved him and his three friends from the fiery furnace, a new king began ruling in the city. His name was King Darius. Now, King Darius really liked Daniel because Daniel was much better at his job than all the other rulers. So the king made a plan to put Daniel in charge of the whole kingdom. This was pretty great news for Daniel, but not so much for the other rulers. They began to get really jealous. On the count of three, show me your best jealous face. One, two, three. Good job, guys. So the jealous rulers came up with a plan. They thought, let's take down Daniel. So they spied on Daniel and they tried to catch Daniel breaking a rule. But they never could because Daniel followed the one true God and he always obeyed God's rules. So they came up with the second plan. Their second plan was, let's create a rule that Daniel has to break. Let's turn to our Bibles and figure out what that rule was. If you guys have your Bible, open it up to Daniel chapter 6, verses 6 through 9. That's the big 6 and the little 6 through 9. If you don't have your Bible, that's okay. Pause this video and go grab it and then play it again when you found Daniel. Daniel 6, 6 through 9 says, Then these high officials came to him, and they said, O oh, King Darius, live forever. All the high officials and the governors and the counselors all agreed that the king should establish and enforce a new rule that says whoever prays to any other god or man for 30 days except to you o king should be thrown into the den of lions when daniel heard this new rule he knew there was no way he could obey it even though everybody else in the whole kingdom would be praying and worshiping King Darius, he knew he had to pray to the one true God like he always was. So he went up to his bedroom, got down on his knees, closed his eyes and began to pray. And when he opened his eyes, who did he see? The other rulers watching him. They ran as fast as they could to King Darius. Stand up and run as fast as you can in place. Good job. When King Darius found out, he was sad because he really liked King Daniel, but he knew he had to enforce his new rule. So reluctantly he said, throw Daniel in the lion's den. That night, King Darius was so upset, he couldn't even eat. He couldn't even sleep either. He tossed and turned all night. And then in the morning, make a rooster sound for me. Nice rooster sound. In the morning, King Darius ran as fast as he could over to the lion's den. He peered in and he shouted, Daniel, are you okay? He listened for what seemed like forever. And then from a distance he heard, I am okay. My one true God sent an angel to shut the mouths of the lions. 
King Darius was filled with joy. Show me what you look like when you're filled with joy. King Darius ordered the other rulers and leaders to pull Daniel out of the lion's den. And it's true, they couldn't find even a single scratch on Daniel. God really had sent an angel to shut the mouths of the lions. Because of Daniel's faithfulness, to not go along with the crowd and to follow his one true God, God saved his life. And not only that, God saved thousands of other people's lives because King Darius made a new rule. And this rule Daniel liked. He ordered all the people to follow Daniel's God, the one true God. How cool is that? How incredible is that? That Daniel prayed to the one true God, even though everybody else in the kingdom was praying to King Darius. Do you think that was easy? Maybe, but probably not. It's so easy for us to sometimes just choose to follow what everybody else is doing and not do what we know is right. Let's play a quick game to prove my point. It's gonna be a simple game of follow the leader. Do exactly what I am doing. See, it was so easy for you guys to follow me. I bet that that's what our lives look like sometimes. Instead of making God the God of our lives and God the leader, we choose to make other people leaders. And our Bible actually warns us against that. Let's check out our Bible verse for the day. Have you guys ever been tempted to follow the crowd and not do what you know was right? I know I have. When I was in first grade, my friends and I got in trouble. And honestly, to this day, I have no idea what we got in trouble for. But I remember in first grade, we had to bring home this slip of paper that explained what we did wrong and we had to tell our parents about it and have them sign the paper and then bring it back to school the next day. But my friends had a brilliant idea. They thought, let's just take this paper outside when it's recess time, rip it up and let the pieces blow away. That way, we never have to tell our parents. So that's what we did. Now I knew what we were doing was wrong, but everybody was doing it. So I just went with the crowd. It's so easy for us to do that sometimes. We see people doing things in movies, on TV, at school, and it's so easy to just wanna follow. But like I said earlier, that means we're not making God the leader of our lives. We're making other people the leader of our lives, and that's dangerous. Daniel, I'm sure it wasn't easy for him when he chose to pray to God instead of praying to King Darius. And I'm sure it was kind of scary, but God blessed him. He came out of the lion's den completely unharmed. And God wants to bless us too when we make him the leaders of our lives. God blesses us when we are in relationship with him, simply by just being with us. That is awesome. We get to be in relationship with God and that should give us so much joy. Now, it's not always gonna be easy and sometimes we'll make mistakes, like I did in first grade when I ripped up the piece of paper. And honestly, I've made a lot of mistakes since first grade. But the best part about, of that is that because I am in a relationship with God, I can ask for forgiveness. And God forgives me and he gives me grace and mercy. And that gives me so much joy, friends. Be sure to have your parents check out online all the additional resources to their story. There's even a little quiz that I've uploaded. So try to prove to your parents how good you were listening and how smart you are. I hope to see you guys in church soon. Bye friends.